Angela Hong is our lecturer this evening. She's a visual artist and living and working on the ancestral lands of the Diné people since 2005. Her background is she has a BFA at the University of Montana in Missoula and her MFA here at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. She, um, her emphasis is on painting and drawing, and she, that's in 2008. And she's a professional studio artist. Summer exhibits her work statewide and nationally. She's currently a teaching artist and adjunct professor of drawing at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. She has received uh, many awards, and she said, I said, should I skip over this part? She said, no, no, read them all. <laughs> <laughs> so Summer is a recipient of the 2020 Rasmussen Individual Artist Project Award. Also, she is an Alaska chapter of the Awesome Foundation Awardee 2020, and she's received, she has received support in, I believe, 2022 from the Alaska State uh, Council on the Arts and the National Endowments of the Arts through an adaptation and innovation grant. So she's quite the lady. Um, <clears throat> She also is affiliated with the Fairbanks Art Association and you exhibit in the Bear Gallery, is that right? <coughs> you do, uh, you're an exhibit technician, they said. And in 2019, Summer founded Alaska's first barn quilt trail. And it's been interesting to see those barn quilts go up around town. And I didn't realize that this was a statewide uh, enterprise, ex exhibit, exhibition. Um, the Barn North Quilt Project stretches statewide from Fairbanks to Ketchikan. So I let someone tell you all about it. At the end, we'll uh, have a little bit of time for questions and answers. Thank you for that nice introduction, Judy. Appreciate that. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Summer Hom, and I am so excited to be here with UAF Summer Sessions tonight. Thank you to Summer Sessions for inviting me to speak. Um, I am always excited to share what I've been up to with anyone who it might be interested. Um, I am the founder and creative director of the Far North Quilt Trail Project. I also am adjunct professor of drawing at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I have another role as Fairbanks Arts Association's exhibition technician. What does that mean? Pretty much that I just have too many emails to check. But um, I wear many hats in this art community and have a robust involvement here in Fairbanks. Um, I'd like to start with this image of my beautiful family. I might cry looking at it. Um, I'm so proud of my children and the life that I was able to build with my partner. And without my family's support, I would not be here doing any of this. Uh, my partner is a wildland firefighter. He's also an alumni of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. He has an um, engineering degree, and we met here on campus while I was a graduate student. We built a cabin on Chena Ridge and have lived there ever since. These are my two kids, Bertie and Sam. And it's important to note that I was a practicing studio artist before my children were born. Um, but once I became a mother, I found it was very difficult to carve out time for art. Um, a, a stark reality set in when I couldn't access affordable childcare. And uh, when my son was born, it became even more difficult to find ways to be creative. 
Um, which leads me to my next slide. If you're not familiar with the Guerrilla Girls, this feminist art collective was founded in 1985, and I thought I would toss this into my slideshow, um, especially because of the line item about halfway down. Um, one of the advantages of being a woman artist is having the opportunity to choose between career and motherhood. Um, note the sarcasm there. Uh, my work at Fairbanks Arts has been so important. It has given me such scope to um, who is making important work in Alaska today. As exhibit technician, I am in charge of all of the installations at Fairbanks Arts' Bear Gallery, which is located at the Centennial Center for the Arts in Pioneer Park. We exhibit work from artists in all career stages and across the state of Alaska. Um, so just a few examples of um, some of the artwork that I get to work with in the top left uh, is uh, Tana by Jennifer Younger. Um, there I am with Esther Hong in her exhibit. Up here is David Rosenthal um, with his amazing Surlian blue paintings of glaciers. Um, this is Elida von Alemno's ephemeral clay floor work, uh, UAF Summer Session's very own Gail Priday's uh, wonderful exhibit, and then the very first exhibit I ever installed at Fairbanks Arts was uh, paintings by Jesse Venable. Um, I, I love what I do. Gallery work is my forte. I have worked in galleries for over 25 years, and I was really excited to return to this profession in 2018. I'll be cel celebrating my five-year art anniversary this September with Fairbanks Arts, and I really love my work. Um, back in 2018, um, there was a big gap in my resume. I had my kids, and like I mentioned before, didn't really have um, time or space to make work. Um, I had kind of given up being a, an artist. I had tried to be creative through photography and um, participated in exhibits that uh, were group shows so I could make like a singular piece. Um, but I was making a lot of what I like to call kitchen table art. Um, I no longer had a space and so um, that time and space were limited. Um, it wasn't until I returned to my professional capacity working at Fairbanks Arts that I was thrown into um, the very month I started the Alaska State Council of the Arts and Fairbanks Arts um, hosted a conference called Interconnect and it was here at this conference that I was uh, working as a liaison for Fairbanks Arts. So right out of this six year long break of um, doing almost nothing, it, well, and I say nothing, but I was a caretaker caring for my children. Um, I was suddenly introducing people like in Zena Marari, who was in charge of the municipality of Anchorage Public Artworks. Um, I was working with Karen Lowell, there pictured in the middle, who was at the time um, working at the Alaska State Council of the Arts. I had the opportunity to meet Amber Webb, who is doing such important work uh, about missing and murdered indigenous people. There is one of her giant cusp books with the images of those women on it. Um, many of you might know Iris Sutton, and then of course if you have a picture of a Sarah Tabert in your car, you should probably include that in your slideshow. Um, the top left, that artist, her name is Megan Para. Um, what was really remarkable about this weekend was taking all of these sessions, sitting in, learning um, how to build a website from Karen Lowell. I got to meet Maria Schell, an Anchorage quilting artist, and she um, gave a session on how to write a winning grant proposal. Uh, which I soaked in. Um, and Zena Marari talked about public art. And then we had this street fair that kind of culminated at the end of this conference. And there was Megan Para outside of Bad Mother. Um, and she was doing this live painting. And I went up to her and she had this um, a piece of paper taped up on the side of Bad Mother and she was live auctioning 
this painting off. And I, I was like, this is so cool. You know, I, I'm so glad you're a part of the conference. And she was like, what conference? <laughs> and it was like, wait, you don't, she's like, no, I'm just, I'm just selling this pain. I'm just trying to sell this painting. It's just first Friday. And um, anyway, it was, it was so eye-opening that whole weekend. And what I learned from Megan Para is that you should do what you want. Um, she didn't need a gallery space. She didn't need anyone telling her that she could. She just set up, sold that painting. It, was, it went for like $1,700, packed her stuff up in a van and drove away. It was awesome. Um, this was really a life-changing event for me because I left with a tool kit in my tool belt of things that um, I, I didn't know how to do. I did not have a website at the time, so that was really helpful. I started thinking more about what it might be like to make public art and if I might be able to do that. Um, and so it was, it was this really neat experience. Um, I got to hear Ernestine Hayes gave a keynote speech at the beginning, and she read from the Tao of Raven, Tao of Raven which was the most inspiring address. And then Deka Heen, who, who was Summer Session's first lecturing artist, gave this closing remark where he asked the community that was gathered there, how do arts, culture, and creativity activate networks and communities to move forward an innovative and inspired future Alaska? And what role do each of our individual voices play in this challenge? That question left me very inspired and gave me the fuel to move forward with my ideas about how I could do something amazing. Um, so, <laughs> I started out uh, applying for things, and if any of you in here are artists, you know that this is a really tough game. Um, I uh, included this slide off my Instagram because um, I thought it was really pertinent. Um, this signified a paradigm shift for me. Instead of being discouraged about rejections, I made them my goal. I was like, I'm going for rejections. And having that mental shift allowed me to put disappointment behind me and move forward. It allowed me to realize that maybe if one opportunity wasn't meant for me, that was okay, and that I should keep trying and continuing on with other, other opportunities. Um, the one, <laughs> one thing I was awarded was um, an exhibit at Fairbanks Arts' Bear Gallery. When I got my job at Fairbanks Arts, I um, made it a personal objective to hang my own exhibit at Fairbanks Arts. I thought that would be a really amazing goal, and so I applied for the portfolio review and was accepted um, and was given a show in 2020. Little did we know what was to come. <laughs> so um, naturally, I needed to start painting. Um, I, like I said, was without a space. Um, I came into these two spaces in a quite extraordinary, extraordinary way. Um, I happened to be on a berry picking excursion with a friend. We had taken a boat down the Tanana to a hidden berry patch and we were picking and the, the gentleman that was driving the boat, uh, we struck up a conversation out picking bloobs and he was like, oh, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm an artist, but I don't really have a space and um, you know, haven't really made anything. And, and he was like, oh, I, I have a space you could use. And I was like, really? And um, this turned out to be Michael Wald of Arctic Wild. He owns the guiding company um, here in town. And this um, space that you can see me in here is uh, a tiny dry mother-in-law apartment above his guiding company, which he allowed me to use in the winter 
um, because they uh, weren't working then. So it was only a summertime business. So I exchanged caretaking his place for use of this small, um, it was like less than 100 square foot, but it was the door that opened for me where I could have a space, leave my materials out, escape from my home life and the needs of my family and come here and work. And honestly, I didn't know what to paint. And I wanted so badly not to come to this space and have some sort of existential crisis. Um, so rewind back to when I met Maria Schell at Interconnect. She really turned me on to quilts. I was very interested in her visuals during that um, lecture session that she gave. And um, it kind of also coincided with finding this Ohio star, which I brought with me tonight. I think it's outside. Um, I, I found that at a grandma's garage sale out in the Goldstream Valley and was struck by its tender simplicity. Uh, I didn't know what it was. Um, I just knew that I was attracted to that design. Um, I, I knew it was something quilt-like, but I didn't know anything about painting quilts um, until I found that. And so when I got this new space, and also that's pictured in front of my summertime studio, which is a 1954 Clipper trailer. Um, the space inside is even smaller than this, um, you know, but you gotta make, make it work with what you have. So these are my two spaces. I moved between these two spaces every six months. Um, that's how dedicated I was to trying to make work. Um, so up rooting, uplifting, going back and forth. I did that for three years from 2018 until 2021. Um, yeah, so I discovered painting quilts. I came to the studio. I found the practice of painting them to be extremely meditative. And I, um, I'm sorry that you can't see the text up there. Um, I, I created an exhibition where I painted quilts. I titled it The Painted Quilt. This was exhibited at Fairbanks Arts' Wandering Bear Gallery um, in January of 2020. Any of you that might remember what happened at the Centennial Center for the Arts in 2019, it was uh, shut down due to structural issues. Um, the staff at Fairbanks Arts did not get any warning. We showed up at work one day and the doors were locked. Um, the building was deemed unsafe. Uh, we have an artist here who happened to have her exhibit up at the time. Um, everything closed down. We lost our space. Um, our team worked tirelessly to find this location and the very first exhibit was mine at this space that um, was donated by Fountainhead. Um, it was out on South Cushman and we basically turned a warehouse full of tractors into a white cube gallery space in a matter of three weeks over the Christmas holiday of that year. So um, that was like this amazing feat of perseverance for the organization. And then um, less than three months later, the pandemic hit. So <laughs> if you ever feel like becoming a member of Fairbanks Arts or donating to Fairbanks Arts, there's always a good time to do that and the time is now. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that organization has really uh, ridden a roller coaster these last couple years and I was really thankful to have that exhibit. It was at that exhibit that I introduced the idea of the quilt trail. I had a little section in the exhibit where I, um, sh I had uh, unveiled my branding um, where I used that same star that I found in Goldstream to be a part of my quilt trail branding. Um, and I started to think about, okay, well, what do I need to do? I love painting these quilts. I got excited about the idea of making paintings that would live outside 
about the idea of changing the visual landscape of Fairbanks, um, of using Fairbanks as a gallery space itself. Um, and so I just started to research. I came across um, these publications by Susie Perrone. Um, I learned that the new American folk art movement of barn quilts began in the early 2000s in Ohio. Um, it was started by a woman named Donna Sue Groves. She happened to work on the state's arts council. So she already had this way in to an arts organization. Um, she put a barn quilt on her barn and suddenly this movement grew um, over the years to over 46 contiguous United States. Um, I did not invent the idea of the quilt trail. What I did do was notice that there has, had never been one developed in Alaska. And at this point, when I realized that, I thought, well, why not me? Why can't I do that? Why can't I utilize this as a multifaceted strategy to gain experience in hanging public art, to make giant paintings and put them on buildings, to gain recognition statewide, to access funding and apply for grants and other opportunities, um, to utilize vibrant public artwork to build community. That was what really excited me about the project. So when I say I started assembling a team, I thought about that professional scaffolding that I might need. I hired professional photographers. I um, hired a graphic designer to help me with the logo. Um, and I started talking about this idea to just about everyone I knew. Uh, I was really passionate at the time about it. Um, I went on radio shows. I, um, again, was applying for that funding and was continuously rejected. I was uh, figuring out where to source materials for this, um, which were humble products that anyone could find at their local hardware store, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I built a website and I started to think about offering workshops. Um, some of my breakthroughs started happening with private commissions. This log cabin design and the Boreal Star were both private commissions. So I had friends in the community that liked my ideas and wanted to hire me to make paintings for their homes. And so I started there. Um, then I had an amazing opportunity to go paint a mural at Goldie's. Um, I know the owners there. I had worked previously with Kara Nash when I was the 2017 Artist of the Year for the Northern Environmental Center. So when she heard about my project to start a quilt trail, she reached out and asked if I wanted to do a mural at Goldie's. Um, that was an exciting opportunity. These are the Goldie's colors, and I selected the snow crystals design and painted that in November of 2019. This became the very first public um, located barn quilt. In 2020, I, um, I had an amazing year. Um, word of mouth got me to Wendy Anderson, the executive director of the Fairbanks Community Garden. They were looking for new garden signs and they had heard about my project. Um, this felt very full circle. I, it was the first time I had a chance to meet with a specific community and actively, deeply listen to their wants and needs for their garden. I went and met with the gardeners. I talked with them quite a bit. Um, about what inspired them about the garden. And then I created concept proposals and met with the board and they selected this Junko's design and this sunflower star design. 
Here in this photo, you can see some of the uh, members of the Hmong community. The Fairbanks Community Garden has quite a few Hmong members, and they wanted me to incorporate elements of these Hmong textiles into the barn quilts. So I utilize the mountain border on both of them, as you can see there and there. Um, here is a, the first workshop I gave. I did this at Well Street Art Company. Uh, it was a part of their Raise the Roof Fund. Um, I used to work at Well Street for David. I worked there for almost a decade as a gallery assistant. Uh, I've had many shows there and I had several studio spaces in that building as well. So I was really familiar with the space. I felt very comfortable. Um, David facilitated everything and um, it was an excellent turnout. Um, I'd like to point out this individual here. This is Lisa Hughes, who at the time was the executive director of the Friends of Creamers Field. Um, Lisa, also known as Lusty, and I used to work together bartending at Ivory Jacks. So we knew each other from way back when, and at the workshop, I was like, hey, how about that big barn at Creamers Field? And she was like, let's do it, um, which uh, really set us on a big adventure. I'll get more towards that later. Um, I wanted to put the Cook Inlet Housing Authority quilts on here, most importantly because these were the first ones in Anchorage. Um, I was rejected from a opportunity that I had applied for for these Cook Inlet Housing Authority mini grants, but someone saw my application and they reached out to me after the fact and offered me this opportunity. So if anyone out there is thinking, you know, or discouraged about being rejected, you should definitely, we don't know what's going on with the lights, it's okay. Definitely continue on because um, this was an opportunity that came out of a rejection and I, I'm so thankful for that. I traveled down, I created three barn quilts for their garden and offered a workshop down there um, to this retirement community. Um, at the time, I had heard that Linda Infante Lyons had painted a barn quilt at Grow North Farm. She's so wonderful, and I reached out to her while I was down there, um, and I had a studio visit with Linda, and we walked just down the way and took photos of her barn quilt, and I was like, please, please be a part of this trail, because it really isn't about me. This is about an access point of creativity for everyone. Anyone who wants to be a part of this can. And, um, and I need people to participate. That's how we grow this. Um, so Linda was uh, so generous at, with her time and um, was exuberant to add this piece to the quilt trail. So there's a quick glimpse of the Anchorage map. Um, if you go to my website, the Far North Quilt Trail Project.com, you can access these maps and you can click on the points and it will take you to a web page that describes each and every barn quilt that's on the trail. Uh, Slipknot at Moose Creek Farm. So I served on the board of Aurora Borealis Cooperative Preschool for several years. It was the preschool that my children attended. Um, Missy and Dan Reese own Moose Creek Farm, and um, my son's final year of preschool got cut short from the pandemic, um, but that Christmas we had, as a collective school, pooled all of our money together to purchase supplies so that Missy could have this barn quilt. Um, we painted it directly on her barn. It was designed by her niece. Um, and color selected by her niece. And then um, we went out there with some good friends, the Petersons, and painted this quilt in May of 2020. So if you go out to Arctic Harvest Distillery ever, this quilt is just beyond that, and you can see it from the road. So this is a part of the trail early on. Um, so back to Creamers. That's a big barn. Um, that 
was a huge project. It was a massive endeavor. I spent about two years pulling it together. Um, we had to jump through many hoops. This is a historic preservation site. I worked very closely with uh, Ryan Klimstraw from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. That was another lucky moment because I contacted Ryan out of the blue and um, told him what I wanted to do. Hey, I want to put a giant painting on the barn. And he was like, I'm from Ohio. Yeah. And my mom's a quilter. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Um, so he, he, knew, he knew exactly what barn quilts were. He knew the exact pattern that I was suggesting. I, I, to me, there was no other pattern but flying geese. However, um, much like the uh, community garden project, I wanted the selection process to be by the community. Um, involving the board, involving the community is a way to bring the community into the project. It's not just about me, like I said, it's about a community choice. So I made several proposals. Um, we had, uh, at this point, I, I, a lot of these projects are like a giant steam engine moving towards a deadline and I'm scrambling to find money, funding, support before we hit the cliff. Um, and this project was very much like that, where I set this thing in motion and then kept getting rejected for grants and opportunities and community support. So I had the executive director of the Friends of Creamers Field on my side. I had the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. They were with me, but I didn't have any community support. Um, the Alaska <laughs> chapter of the Awesome Foundation um, they give mini grants of $1,000 to any projects that they deem as awesome. Well, they rejected me four times in a row. Actually, they asked me to stop applying <laughs> a, on the fourth time. And I was like, you guys, but this, this is awesome. Come on, this is going to be so good. Um, and so, you know, um, at that point, it was like, okay, I took a step back from it. Um, I happened to know a member of the board for this, uh, Kess Woodward, and I reached out to him. I had had a studio visit with him before, and, um, you know, I just kind of was like, man, you know, I'm, I feel like this should be a yes. Why isn't it? What's happening here? He was like, just take a break, come back. Let's see your application in a couple months. And at that point in time, I had been able to pull together more community support. Design Alaska, which one do I want? Oh, sad. I thought I included the um, structural design of the quilt. I know I have it on the Fairbanks farm one, so you'll get to see it. But um, Design Alaska, I asked them for support. They were very generous in doing all of the structural design and engineering that was needed to figure out how to put a 8x8, 200 eight, pound painting 40 feet in the air. Um, I did not have a contractor lined up. Um, I tried straight ahead and they said yes and then they pulled out four months before. Um, which is okay, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. So, um, you know, pulling together all of these community members that were supporting the project, when I went back to the Awesome Foundation, I had, I had more of in-kind support. And I think once they saw that, they were excited about the project and they saw, okay, she's not going away. And so the fifth application, I was awarded this grant, and it was enough for me to feel like the funding was coming from the community um, and, and really fueled me to move forward with that. Um, I actually did not realize that I was going to be selected for the Rasmussen Individual Artist Award until well after this project was underway. Um, thank goodness. <laughs> because uh, the, the barn quilt at Creamer's Field, um, all said and done, that painting was a $12,000 painting. 
Um, and I walked away with $900 as an artist stipend, thanks to Rasmussen, because I wrote it into my budget um, to receive something for doing two and a half years of work. Um, this was a really amazing moment for me. The quilt trail, this was the cornerstone of the project. This is the most iconic barn in Fairbanks. You can't have a quilt trail without tagging it. So um, I talked the <laughs> Department of Fish and Game into hosting me for an artist in residence because again, where do you where do you make this painting? This painting is huge. It's eight by eight feet. It had to be in two sections and then it was combined together um, on site. So I um, painted this uh, piece in the pole barn next to the uh, barn and I invited the community to come down and talk to me about what was happening and what was going on and come and see the painting and ask me questions and um, we installed this in August of 2020 and I remember it was really one of the first times when the community gathered after that pandemic made us all be so separated. And I really think that that is why the quilt trail succeeded so much in the early days was because of the pandemic, because people were looking for ways to be um, connected and together. And this was one way where you didn't actually have to physically be together, but you still could connect places together. I better hurry up because I'm already 40 minutes in and I have like 80 slides. Um, yeah, so thanks to Sarah Manriquez for these beautiful photos. Uh, right at the same time, I was painting this Rising Sun barn quilt for Boreal Sun Charter School where my kids were attending school at the time. Um, another really, really cool project. I was able to use the gym. Um, these. The Friends of Boreal commissioned this barn quilt from me. Um, and I just think it turned out so lovely. It was really also iconic and, and uh, made, uh, really highlighted this school that was kind of in this strange area of town. It's on 24th and Barnett behind FMH. Um, and I, after I put this barn quilt up, I received this message in my direct message on Instagram and really it just um, fueled my fire to continue doing um, this work because uh, it meant so much to me to receive, to receive this beautiful feedback and yeah, so thank you Valerie. <laughs> um, when I started out organizing the quilt trail, it became very apparent that there were already barn quilts in this town. People had already started painting these. It wasn't just me or they had already existed before I got here. So it was actually Ryan Klimstraw that was like, hey, there's one over on Gull Road. And I you know, went searching for it as one does for these because it's like a scavenger hunt, which makes it really fun. Um, and I saw Swoon by Sonia Zastro out there on Goal Road and um, actually like had to do some digging on the borough website to find out who lived there and I called her up and was like, hey, love your barn quilt. I'm doing this thing where I'm making a collection of them online. Would you like to be a part of it? And she was like, absolutely. Um, the same thing happened with Margaret Weedman. I heard about this barn quilt through word of mouth and friends. Um, and went and visited with Margaret and asked her about the inspiration for this and she agreed to be on the trail also. These are both available to see to anyone, can go look at these at any time. And once the word got out, the community submissions started to come in. So Wild Rose by Rebecca Missler was the very first one that was submitted on my website. She had read about the quilt trail in the News Miner and painted that beautiful mural on the side of her shed out in North Pole. Um, some of these folks I know and some of them I don't. Sharon Hansen's a dear friend. Allison Rice was at ABC Preschool with us and was there 
uh, for the unveiling of Missy Reese's quilt and wanted to make one herself. Lindy Kin never met this individual, but she made a lovely barn quilt and submitted it online. Um, and of course, uh, Storm at Sea by Chloe Peterson. So some of these quilts are located on private property and an option for the quilt trail is if you don't want people driving up to your home. So this quilt's actually at the end of a private drive. Um, you can just share the image online. So this is one of those specific quilts where you, it's not available for the public, it's not on the map, but we share the image online so people can enjoy it. Ooh, Rasmussen Foundation. When I wrote that grant application, it was for three barn quilts. It was, it included the Creamersfield quilt, this piece of work that ended up at Calypso Farm. So when I talk about deepening previously established relationships, I, um, after I graduated um, college here and got my MFA degree, I wanted to do something completely different and that looked like a farm apprenticeship at Calypso. I worked with these guys in 2008 and so I knew they had a barn because I mucked that sucker out. And I was like, you guys, do you want to be a part of my project? I'm going to apply for this grant and you would have to do nothing but work with me and give me the space to hang a painting. And they were super into it. They selected this design. We actually pulled from their hand spun and hand dyed yarn for the color inspiration and um, came up with this hen and chicks barn quilt. Love my daughter's face in that one. Uh, um, and then of course, uh, Wall Street Art Company. So David Mollett and his wonderful space. Um, it was just a uh, full circle to make David and Jesse a barn quilt. They also selected the design and colors and I painted exactly what they wanted and asked for. Um, the quilt trail signs, they get installed next to the barn quilt. They're how people in the public can tell what it, they're looking at. Um, and it's got a nice little space for me to write something that's important to me. So I dedicated that painting to the artists of Wall Street Art Company, the past, present, and future. That is not OSHA certified, what my kids are doing. Um, and it's okay. <laughs> so this is, this is uh, still there today. Um, this was just installed two years ago now. Oh my gosh, Carrie Hamos, program director of the folk school. So again, I mean, I just got my hands dipped a little bit everywhere, but I taught um, a few classes at the folk school. Nature journal journaling for the very young was one. Carrie's daughter was also attending Boreal Sun. So I was seeing her regularly and I was like, hey, let's do something cool. Let's make a barn quilt for the folk school. I love that community gem. If you have yet to take a class at the folk school, please go down there and check it out. It is just a remarkable place filled with really wholesome folks at doing incredible things. Um, and this was the first project that I tailored to the grant that I applied for. So this project was funded by a community arts development grant from the Alaska State Council of the Arts. Those grants are only available to organizations. So this was my first fiscal sponsorship where I wrote the grant, but I had an organization sponsor that grant. So they did all of the administering of the money. I wrote the grant, did the project, executed the painting. This was really, really cool to do this project. Um, we painted with the kids. Uh, I selected um, like six designs and let them choose. I talked a little bit about color combinations. Um, and we hosted a full day workshop with two different age groups. And then uh, my partner and I constructed this barn quilt where we put these quilts all together and we titled this the folk quilt and there i am with john manthai one of the founders of the folk school and tom zimmer from calypso came down to help hang it 
Um, that's a fun picture, thanks to Sarah Manriquez, who showed up to help capture the moment. This is the installation day. We had everyone from the workshop show up for this. It was really, really cool. And this is on the back of the folk school. Um, they also have a little box which hosts these rack cards. Please feel free to take one after the lecture if you would like. Um, they are kind of an, a, a tangible ephemera for folks that maybe don't have social media or don't necessarily like to go online, but that has all of the information about where to find the quilts. Um, yeah, that was a busy year. I was also the Fairbanks Summer Arts Festival Artist of the Year. I created this Hope Springs Eternal barn quilt, which they installed out at their Twin Bears camp. So now there's a dot way out on Chena Hot Springs Road, which makes me feel great. I just want to cover the map. It's so fun, you guys, when these things start popping up. So um, there is the land acknowledgement, which sits at the top of the header on my website. Um, gratefully acknowledge that this land was stewarded by the indigenous communities since time immemorial. Um, I'm going to venture away from the quilt trail. I want to talk just a tiny bit about other things I do. Um, I had this exhibit in May of 2022 called Loose Quilts, where if you want to see the pendulum swing the other direction. So things were real crisp and regimented, and I wanted to kind of dip away from that. So these are my abstract paintings, um, which were really fun to make. And I also created some drawings where I really played with um, the looseness and thought a lot about quilts blowing in the wind, honestly, and what that might look like. Oh man, I gotta hurry, you guys. Fairbanks fast. Yeah, so talk about a big project. Um, I applied for this uh, Bloomberg Foundation opportunity where we painted the streets. This was a 5,200 square foot ground mural that was executed in 72 hours by a team of 37 volunteers. That was incredible to like ask my community to come out and help assist with this and they showed up. It was awesome. I also hired an indigenous non-binary uh, artist assistant and of course brought my kids with me wherever I go. There's a couple pictures of the final product. Um, this, this was really cool, really challenging. That asphalt was probably 100 degrees. Um, and yeah, that was an amazing weekend. Um, I went right from that down to Montana where I painted this mural. Um, it just, like putting this slideshow together, I was like, okay, no wonder I'm tired. This is a lot of work. Um, <laughs> Friendship Stars uh, is near the Imagine Butte Resource, Resource, Resource Center in Butte, America, is, as it's known. That is where my uh, parents live. I am originally from Missoula, but now when I go home, I go to Butte, Montana. Um, this opportunity, I manifested. I heard an interview with the IBRC's managing artist, a person by the name of Big Time Livermore, they were talking on a podcast called, um, oh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. It's all about Butte, the richest hill. That's what it's called. This, if you ever want to know about Butte, Montana, truly a remarkable place. Used to be the largest city in the Northwest in the early 1900s with a population of about 150,000. It's built on top of a copper mine. And right now, only about 30,000 people live there. So the place is a historic living museum. It's quite remarkable. It's a home to many artists. And um, BT was talking to my friend Nora Sachs on this podcast about how they received all this funding from the Sarda Foundation, which um, revitalizes Superfund areas, and how they were looking for artists to do murals. 
And I had taken a couple printmaking classes from BT while I was visiting my parents, and I reached out to them and said, hey, I'd love to come down. It would mean so much to me to do a mural. And so they were like, send me your project proposal. And I did in 2020. Um, and so this got totally sidetracked by the pandemic, but two years later I was able to go down and fulfill the vision of this mural. Whew. Okay, so I just took this slide today. <laughs> um, I, I had the opportunity to work on these um, information panels at the Botanical Garden. I, I drew this willow. Jen Gunderson is a graphic designer here in town, and she was working with Katie De Christina, the manager of the Botanical Garden, to create these uh, informational signs for the Babula Children's Garden. Um, and for some reason, she couldn't draw Willow, so she knew I had taught nature journaling and reached out. And anyway, the segue is that I had worked with the manager of the Botanical Garden, and I was like, hey, I see that barn over there. Um, and she was like, whoa, that, that sounds like a cool project. Um, and then like rolled out this like massive line of red tape and was like, do you see that? And I was like, watch this. Um, and so this was another project that took about two years to manifest. Um, originally, I had hoped to put the barn quilt on the other side, on the southwestern facing side of this barn, but when we went to look at the install site, it was um, kind of where they used to corral the animals, and there were a lot of like pipes and things in the way, so in terms of like actually lifting it up and putting it there, it looked quite impossible. There's that sweet Design Alaska drawing. So this is what it looks like when you hire a structural engineer to do the work. Um, this represents about $3,000 um, just to have somebody come out, look at the barn, do a site inspection, check out the inside, look at what the walls are made of, see what it might be like to hang something that weighs 200 pounds on the outside of it and give the okay. Um, the chancellor was like, you can do this, but only if you have Design Alaska and Johnson River, the same folks that helped with Creamer's Field. So again, when I, you know, this felt like a big steam engine heading towards something that was nearly impossible. Um, and I had been working with Katie De Christina. We were researching different types of grant granting foundations. We had hoped to do something with the Alaska Humanities Foundation. Um, that never panned out. So this really, I mean, this, this, one, this one scared me. Um, this was a big project that uh, I had no funding for but was well underway. Um, again, I wanted the community involvement I insisted that the chancellor appoint a committee. Um, I did not want to be the only one selecting what went here at the barn. That process lasted about a year where I went through many, many different designs that mostly included reindeer because that's, I was like, oh, it's got to be a reindeer quilt. Um, it was Katie De Christina that was like, I want to see food systems. And that really got me thinking, okay, food systems. Where are we? What does that mean? What was this place before it was this? Um, which really led us to the wild blueberry and troth blossoms barn quilt. Um, what is troth? Troth is a um, hedicerium alpinium. It's also known as the wild potato. And uh, it's part of the place name of Trothieta, which means the wild potato ridge. So when I thought about what really needed to go there, and the committee also um, felt the same, it turned out to be um, the wild blueberry and troth blossoms barn quilt, which gave a nod to the food systems that were in place and utilized by indigenous Alaskans before the University of Alaska Fairbanks was ever here. 
Um, again, I was like, where am I gonna paint this sucker? Uh, I asked them if they would host me for an artist in residency at the Fairbanks Experiment Farm and they were exuberant to do so. I painted this barn quilt where the reindeer used to be. And all of this led up to an installation day that was quite remarkable. I worked with the GBG friends to secure many grants. Oh my God, I wrote so many grants. Um, there they are at the bottom, the Usabelli Foundation. I got an adaptation and innovation grant from the Alaska State Council of the Arts. I wrote a grant for R2 Sense, which is an amazing organization here in town. If you subscribe, you can give them $2 a month, and they do amazing things with that collective money. Um, yeah, so this was, this, this was a huge project. There's Katie DeCristina. I could not have done this without her steadfast partnership and support. Um, again, she's the manager of the Botanical Garden. There I am with Alan Tone, the manager of the Fairbanks Experiment Farm. He was a little harder to get on board, uh, <laughs> but he came, he came with, and then he came to the, um, to the install. There was actually a running bet against him showing up, and I won a lot of money. It was awesome. <laughs> Um, one of the unexpected outcomes of this project was this, um, the amazing opportunity and invitation to present to the University of Alaska Alumni Association uh, Board, Benefactors Board. We were invited to share a little bit about the project um, and Katie and I secured a, um, a, a grant uh, which um, half of it went towards the quilt trail and half went towards the Botanical Gardens Harvest Project Collaborative, where they work with students to teach them how to grow food and donate it to local um, organizations that are looking for uh, food support. So all in all, that was a massive, massive win. And there's the community that came out to support that. Some of the people here today, tonight, are in that photo. And I just want to say how much it meant to me that you came. Thank you so much for being a part of that community. Here's a quick image of some of the barn quilts that have come in the, in the last 18 months. I, I put too much. I, it's, and I, 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 w I like omitted a bunch of stuff too. Um, I do other work, I do sculptural work. Here's my piece, Mother Braid, Their Mood is Not Their Mood. This piece has traveled nationally. I work with a group of artist mothers. Um, we have been exhibiting for the last year and we will be bringing the exhibit to Bear Gallery in September. Please join us for that. We're doing exciting contemporary work um, centered around the concepts of motherhood. And then I, I just got back from this project at the Seed Lab and the Anchorage Museum. Um, this was really the pinnacle of my time, led me to this project here where they invited me to create a mural for the Seed Lab. Um, there had been talk about how the roof may indeed be a future site for an urban pollinator garden. And so I abstracted indigenous pollinator plants. Um, this, this was the information I had here. I had never been to this place. I had never seen that wall. That is the only thing I had. And you can see my question marks. How, how big is it? Um, and so this was my projected design. They wanted me to paint the mechanical boxes that were there as well. Um, I just got back from this. This was five weeks ago. Um, one of the remarkable things that happened down there is that I, I built community in a place that I don't even live. And that was really, that was really amazing to feel um, the support from uh, some of the artist mothers that came to help me. Some friends from Fairbanks came down I had a couple students from my beginning drawing class that were in town that came to help as well, and a couple folks that I had never met also came. And so um, that is the pollinator's quilt that I completed um, May 20th 
at the Seed Lab in Anchorage. <laughs> Jamie, you're in my slideshow. Um, this is my last slide. Sorry, guys, I went a little bit over. But um, I am, uh, have been very uh, blessed and fortunate to come back to the university after all of these years to teach drawing. Um, it's been a real honor to share a space with Jamie Smith and um, it's been very inspiring to my personal practice to um, work with graphite on paper and try to make something amazing out of that. And I thought I would close my talk with this image of the winter solstice, um, but a recent drawing that I did. And so hopefully, um, yeah, that gives you a little bit more of an idea about the work that I do and the future work that I do. And thank you so much for coming tonight. I really appreciate your time and undivided attention. And yeah, thank you again.